Chronic inflammatory conditions are extremely common diseases, both in humans and essentially in the entire animal kingdom. And in both in autoimmune diseases and in pathogen induced diseases, the inflamed areas are rapidly colonized by lymphocytes and particularly by B cells. Wherever you have the inflammation, the, the lymphoid cells invade the inflamed area and organize themselves in highly ordered structures, which are called the lymphoid follicles. And the scaffold, the skeleton of these lymphoid follicles is provided by a highly specialized cell type, which is called the follicular dendritic cell. So, in order to to visualize um, the biology of follicular dendritic cells and to make you understand what goes on, my, um, uh, my little daughter Chiara, who is eight year old, and her friend Haley have uh, prepared uh, some cookies uh, which are uh, meant uh, to represent uh, follicular dendritic cells uh, and uh, B lymphocytes, which are the happy guys with um, happy faces, uh, but also pathogens uh, like, for example, HIV and prions, which are the guys with with uh, sad faces or with angry faces. Now, the, um, uh, the thing with the follicular dendritic cells is the following. Now, the guy with uh, all the little arms uh, is the follicular dendritic cells. These are the processes, the dendrites. And what the follicular dendritic cell does is that um, it traps cells, but also pathogens, on its surface. Now, the problem is that follicular dendritic cells uh, arise ubiquitously wherever you have an inflammatory condition. So whether it is in the joint or in the lung, sooner or later you end up with follicular dendritic cells. So the question has been in the field for many years, where do these follicular dendritic cells come from? Because the, the, essentially there are just two possibilities. Because they can arise everywhere, the most likely possibility is that they would come from blood cells that are continuously circulating. But all the available evidence deposes in, uh, against follicular dendritic cells uh, being bloodborne. So, what uh, we are left with the second possibility that follicular dendritic cells may actually be stromal, sessile, immobile cells. But if that were the case, then they must derive from ubiquitous precursors, because, as I said before, the follicular dendritic cells can arise everywhere in the body. So, we tackled this question, and uh, the way we have done it uh, was that several years ago we embarked uh, in, a, um, uh, in a sort of endeavor to acquire additional markers for follicular dendritic cells. Because when we started this ten years ago, very little was known about uh, follicular dendritic cells, and in particular very few markers uh, were available. So, one of the things that we found is that the prion protein is a very good marker for follicular dendritic cells. Uh, and uh, the, pr uh, the prion protein, which is called also PRP, um, is highly expressed, uh, and uh, so what we did was to de develop antibodies against the prion protein. And this is a molecular model, a 3D structure derived uh, from the crystal structure of the prion protein, and uh, we created a series of antibodies that highly specifically recognize uh, the prion protein and bind to it very tightly. And this is one such antibody, it's called POM1, and um, it can immunoprecipitate uh, the prion protein and it can also stain it in tissue. So we use this uh, as a way to recognize follicular dendritic cells uh, within uh, lymphoid follicles and their precursors. And then we embarked uh, also in a uh, microarray screen that um, allowed us uh, to identify additional genes uh, beyond the prion protein that would be involved in follicular dendritic cells uh, tracing. And one such gene turned out to be a protein called MFGE8 milk fat globule EGF-like protein 8. And 
So we ran in situ hybridization of um, various organs in inflamed and non-inflamed conditions to see to identify cells that would express MFG8 in the hope that such cells may actually represent FTC precursors. And what we found, this is an in situ hybridization and the black stain indicates the, um, um, the MFG8 expressing cells and we find that uh, in the split but also in other places, uh, these cells are always to be found in the immediate vicinity of blood vessels. Uh, this is a central arteriole, this is the endothelium that is labeled here in red, and in black you see the MFG8 expressing cells. Uh, so, because of this pattern, uh, we got the suspicion that, uh, well, maybe these cells might be pericytes. Uh, pericytes are mural cells uh, that uh, surround the wall of blood vessels, uh, and of course they are ubiquitous, uh, so that would make a lot of sense. So what we did was to take uh, bone marrow cells and to inject them into mice that are genetically engineered to be devoid of follicular dendritic cells. And what, when this was done, what we found is that uh, injecting the hematopoietic cells would immediately lead to a blossoming of MFG8 positive cells around the vessels. And this is what you see here. These are all the uh, MFG8 positive cells. And then after three days and after 13 days, you see that a lymph follicle is now uh, being created around uh, the area where the cells have arisen. So here you see really in real time how the lymph follicle arises and how it is being structured by MSG8 positive cells. So. Um, uh, the, because these cells are around the vessel, we thought they might be pericytes. Uh, but one specific marker of pericytes uh, is, a play, is the receptor, the beta chain of the receptor for platelet derived growth factor, PDGFR beta. So we asked uh, are follicular dendritic cells positive for PDGF receptor beta? Turn out, uh, unfortunately, that uh, this was not the case. But then we thought, uh, maybe the pericytes, uh, they make PDGF receptor beta. But uh, when they then mature and become follicular dendritic cells, uh, they may actually lose expression of uh, this marker. So how to go about this uh, and prove this? So this image shows you that uh, the mature follicular dendritic cells, they are actually negative for PDGF receptor beta. So, the way we have approached this uh, was uh, to make a cross uh, between a mouse that expresses the Cre recombinase uh, under control of the PDGF receptor beta promoter. And these mice uh, were intercrossed with a second strain of mouse, uh, which expresses the beta galactosidase gene, which gives rise to a blue color, um, controlled by the Rosa 26 locus, and, uh, in, uh, and uh, interposed in it is a LOXP flanked stop cassette. So the uh, LEXC marker is not expressed, but when you cross these both mice, then uh, um, the result is that in every cell that uh, has at any time during its life expressed a PDGF receptor beta, the LOXP cassette will be excised and uh, the expression of the blue marker will be activated. Activated. As a result, in, uh, if the follicular dendritic cells uh, are really derived uh, from a cell type uh, that at some point in its life has expressed PDGF receptor beta, then uh, the follicular uh, dendritic cells should become blue. And this is shown here, and these are two follicular dendritic cells uh, identified by uh, the MSG8 marker, and here you can see that these cells have become blue. So this shows uh, that at some point uh, the, um, when it was uh, young, uh, follicular dendritic cells must have expressed PDGF receptor beta. Now, this is good evidence, but it's still circumstantial. The final experiment, uh, the real, uh, that would really nail our hypothesis, uh, consisted of taking pericytes, uh, purified pericytes, a cell fraction that doesn't contain anything but pericytes, uh, and um, showed that we can make them uh, differentiate into follicular dendritic cells. And this was done with the following experiment. What we did here was to take fat, abdominal fat, from mice, and then we derived uh, 
a pure fraction of pericytes that is shown here and then these pericytes uh, were first we made absolutely sure that there was no immune cell comprised in this fraction and then the pericytes were incorporated into collagen sponges and the sponges were transplanted into the kidney capsule of a recipient mouse and this recipient mouse cannot make a follicular dendritic cells on its own. So, and then we asked, can we, if we give an inflammatory stimulus, can we actually produce follicular dendritic cells from this setup? And because if they come up, they must have derived from the pericytes because the host cannot make FTCs. So this was done and this was exactly what we found. Um, the, uh, and the blue stain indicates here the follicular dendritic cells uh, which uh, trap immune complexes uh, surrounded by lymphocytes within uh, these uh, um, collagen sponges. And this was uh, a, a very strong evidence uh, which, uh, in my opinion, settles the argument and indicates that uh, follicular dendritic cells are stromal and uh, follicular dendritic cells are derived uh, from uh, these vascular mural cells.